We're outside a brand new warehouse belonging to an American logistics firm, PFS, in the English city of Southampton. This place has been opened for one word and one reason, Brexit. Businesses across Britain are battling a stubbornly uncertain Brexit future, with well-known names ready to shut down their UK facilities or shift jobs overseas. But this e-commerce firm has chosen a different route. You're looking to expand in the next few weeks. Absolutely. I mean, this is not what we see now is not the full picture. There will not be all of it, no. Lisa Cooley left Memphis, Tennessee late last year to open this new fulfillment centre in the port city of Southampton. She's barely gotten her feet under the table, but Brexit's March 29th deadline is already demanding her attention. It's a task trying to start something up in that span of time. And it's also a task trying to get inventory moved and imported here and set up. You have processes you have to build around that. I believe it's a little chaotic in the, in the beginning, but you know, at the end, our goal is to service our clients. The company employs thousands of workers worldwide, and those clients are as global as their consumers. Until recently, PFS had only one major European warehouse in Belgium, just an hour outside Brussels, where UK Prime Minister Theresa May has travelled again and again to try and salvage her divorce deal with the EU. Are you expecting a breakthrough, Prime Minister? Regardless of how well or badly Brexit negotiations go in the coming weeks, it's clear that many sectors seeking to do business here in Britain have already made significant changes. And this warehouse is one big example. Logistics can be relentless, and companies like PFS cannot wait on the politicians while they wrap, pack, and ship people's parcels. Opening a new fulfillment centre, it's not an easy task. You know, there's, there's timelines. It takes time to get equipment. It takes time to get your systems up and going. Of course, you have to go through the process of hiring employees. And, you know, times, I wouldn't necessarily say on the side of the, the retailers we service, right? It's not just time, is it? It's money, right? right? So you guys are spending money on building a facility like this, hiring people here in the UK. Does that, in your view, get passed on to someone in the end? Yeah, I mean, I think it, essentially it goes to the, the consumer at the end, right? five weeks to go, if it's a no deal, there would be for them an initial cost increase as they up their capacity to enable traders that, that do business with EU companies to work as if they were doing trade with the rest of the world today. And those costs have already been incurred as a contingency measure. Brexit may have shattered British politics, but the economy has so far survived, with unemployment at its lowest level in generations. I mean, I think in the long run, it's more the uncertainty of not knowing which direction you're, you're going to proceed. I think that's the biggest concern and the biggest challenge here. And as firms make preparations and banks book provisions, those Brexit concerns are now big enough to fill a building. Mm -hmm.